a very good morning students 18th june we are somewhere close to five and a half months away from cat 2023 this particular uh, online session is to talk about the important things to keep in mind in reading comprehension as you move along in the journey goes without saying that reading from the b factory reading club and uh, newspaper editorials and any other relevant sites like guardian aeon etc is very important but also what matters is your ability to categorize questions your ability to attack them with clarity to eliminate options and then your ability to avoid mistakes by identifying the kind of mistakes that you are making in your attempting RCs while mo taking mocks or previous year papers. So mistake pattern identification and working on it to ensure that your accuracy improves. That is something which is also very, very important. So these are things you need to keep in your mind as you prepare. Uh, in this video, I'll particularly talk about two things. In the first part, go through a content on understanding what types of RC questions have been coming in the previous few years. That will give you an idea on how much understanding what a question implies or is trying to ask helps you think in the right way, then attack the question and the options. Why is this important? Because you get limited time in which you have to tackle the questions. Time is the key. So if you're able to read a question and immediately categorize it in your mind, you know what kind of thought process needs to go to solve the question by eliminating options. This is the key to uh, achieving success in reading comprehension. I hope uh, you enjoy and learn in the first part. In the second part, I will take you through a reading comprehension as a sample and uh, request you to keep in mind the exact process that we are using to attack the set. I'll do it at a slower pace than you need to do it in a real time. But the concepts and the psychology that we are going to use you should be using this in totality while you are attempting and analyzing RCs in your preparation. This particular interaction is on uh, where uh, do we need to focus with respect to uh, CAT uh, RCs. Now see, there are three levels to reading comprehension perfection. Uh, the first level definitely is uh, central idea based reading where you read fast and write down the central idea. The second reading, the second uh, level is understanding the what of the question. Now you will see that questions appear in different forms, but eventually these questions belong to certain categories and each category has, which follows the third level, a way to eliminate, right? So the ability to immediately find out, identify that which type of question it is and accordingly react in the exam, uh, eliminate kaise karna hai, that is something which uh, makes you better at cat reading comprehension, right? So let's do this exercise together for some and uh, these questions which you see, 72 questions, uh, these are 24 into 3 questions from the last uh, 2 to 3 years CAT papers. 2017 onwards papers ke hi questions hai ye. So this sample has been taken from the previous uh, uh, last 3 years CAT papers. So it's a very recent uh, trend, right, uh, which we are going to observe and uh, think like uh, a CAT expert, okay. So have a look here. Uh, the first part, the first question, uh, see, this I, I have a bucket here, right. It is sorry, options there. See, on the right hand side, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there are 8 buckets, question per se mind mein, pehle so classify karna hota hai. Understand there is a difference between what is the question and what of the question. What is the question means question kya pooch raha hai, toh har question ala ala cheez pooch sakta hai. What of the question when I say that, it means identifying the context of the question with clarity, which means pakarna ki wo question kis type ka hai. Usta category classify kar lena and then question ko usko uh, uske accordingly elimination ka framework mind mein set karna ki kaise solve karenge. This is a precision that you need given the time frame that you have in the exam. Alright. So, let's, let's do some labeling. You know? I'll share this Excel file with you also. Ta, taki uh, class ke baad isko tum log khud se complete karo. To khud se clarity aega na because this is all research based. You, know? uh, you, you will see ki uh, cat mein aisa nahi ki har question alag hota hai. Abhi dekhte hai sample hai. Kaafi bada sample. Let's see. First question. Uh, exception based. Second question, to point out that, मतलब, uh, purpose based. Third question, central idea, theme based. 
फोर्थ क्वेश्चन बिलीव दिटीज दैट आर मोर क्रिएटिव पैराग्राफ के हिसाब से या किसी कैरेक्टर के हिसाब से पूछ रहा है डायरेक्ट क्वेरी बेस क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव टू शो दैट टू शो समथिंग मतलब क्या पर्पस है पर्पस बेस्ड सिक्स एग्जामेशन बेस्ड राइट सेवेंथ पर्पस बेस्ड देखो एट एक्सेप्शन बेस्ड नाइन्थ वुड सपोर्ट बेस्ड ऑन द पैराग्राफ तो इट इज डायरेक्ट क्वेरी बेस्ड ओके now if i zoom then uh, you will lose on the content that is the problem uh just a minute uh okay i guess it, it is a little better now develop develop is it better now yes okay right so look at the next question question number 10 uh to demonstrate that to demonstrate means purpose pooch raha hai question number 11 in infer do likha hai inference pooch raha hai question number 12 as a device to purpose pooch raha hai uske piche ka purpose kya tha 13 which best reflects the author's argument matlab the main theme pooch raha hai is tarike se 14 exception based 15 what is the reason according to the author direct query 16 author comes to the conclusion conclusion based right uh, 17 to argue that kyun argue kar raha hai purpose based next one again to argue that purpose based next one best describes what the passage is trying to do you know this time what it is trying to purpose based why do according to the passage direct query based next one exception based hai na to uh ये दीज आर कैट लास्ट थ्री इयर्स क्वेश्चन आर थी पहला चीज इज दिस एक्सरसाइज मेकिंग इट क्लियर टू यू दैट नॉट एवरीथिंग इज डिफरेंट मतलब देर आर टाइप्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन विच कैन बी कैटेगराइज इन माइंड पार्ट की बड़ा सा क्वेश्चन यू कैन एक्चुअली फ्रेम इन योर माइंड की वो किस टाइप का है ये पहला पार्ट समझना सब एवरी वन दैट इज हाउ आई थिंक इन दी एग्जाम तुरंत से पकड़ते हैं कि वो किस टाइप का क्वेश्चन है ठीक एंड I will give it, give the sheet to you. घर पे खुद से करोगे ना तो ज्यादा clarity आएगा और confidence भी आएगा ठीक है तो now let us go through all these types uh, one by one, है ना तो let let me take any uh, box here and let me zoom it a bit. Let's see the types, है ना Just a sec. Right. So. Right. Uh, are the types uh, readable right now? Can you see? Yes. Okay. So the first type. Now anybody who wants to write, now you can write it down because it is very interesting, right? Ultimately, it's any type. So, its thought process, how to lead. So, first thing is identify the category in which the question belongs. The second thing is move from that to the elimination part, right? So, वो सोचना क्या है ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है पार्ट पार्ट में हम लोगों ने डिस्कस भी किया है लेट्स सम इट अप राइट थीम बेस्ड थीम बेस्ड मीन फोकस इज ऑन व्हाट मतलब व्हाट इज द मेन पॉइंट द समरी पूछ रहा है तो सम ऑफ मेन पॉइंट डायरेक्टली सेंट्रल एरिया में मेन थीम पूछ रहा है तो ओवरऑल मेन पॉइंट क्या है मेन ओवरऑल का मेन पॉइंट क्या है बट दीज क्वेश्चन विच फोकस ऑन द मेन पॉइंट वॉट इज द मेन थिंग इनको हम लोग क्लासीफाई कर रहे हैं थीम बेस्ड ठीक है सेंट्रल आइडिया थीम मेन ये समरी इन सब को हम लोग थीम बेस्ड में डाल रहे हैं ठीक है ऐसे क्वेश्चंस में आपको मेन पॉइंट पकड़ना होता है जो पैसेज में गिवन होता है ठीक द सेकंड टाइप डायरेक्ट क्वेरी बेस्ड डायरेक्ट क्वेरी मींस अकॉर्डिंग टू दर और अकॉर्डिंग टू दैसेज ऐसे क्वेश्चन मीन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज प्रूव और इज सपोर्टेड बाई द पैसेज सो हियर यू कैनॉट एज्यूम एनीथिंग फ्रॉम आउटसाइड तो आपको राइट फैक्ट खोजना होता है और राइट कॉन्टेक्ट मतलब क्वेश्चन के हिसाब से कौन सा पैराग्राफ के हिसाब से सबसे सटीक है Which of the following is the most precise or exact according to the passage on the question? That is what you look for in the direct query-based questions. Now, number three, impact-based. Now, impact-based questions are those where it is not given in the passage, but you assume that they are true, and then you look at their impact. Right? Uh, can somebody uh, uh, tell me in chat uh, what can be the three responses to an impact-based question? 
when the question is asking you accept the following strengths or weakness an argument an option can do what what can be the three possible options three possible impacts of an option three possible uh, impacts yes either it can be a positive impact or a negative impact or neutral impact right or it can strengthen it it can weaken it or it can be irrelevant absolutely correct right negative strengthen or no effect okay so uh, impact based questions we haven't seen till now in this list let me find out everybody uh, with me let's let's go down let's go down let's go down uh, okay question number 58 question number 58 everybody pay attention just check this out ha no question number 58 that question exact impact based which of the following conditions if true would invalidate matlab inme se kaun sa agar correct hota hai to will make weaken right will weaken the uh, given argument right okay question number 64 everyone question number 64 check this out again impact based right question number 67 dekhte jao है ना तो ऐसे क्वेश्चन में क्या करेंगे द मोमेंट यू आइडेंटिफाइड द क्वेश्चन इज इम्पैक्ट बेस्ड यू रीड एवरी ऑप्शन अज्यूम इट टू बी ट्रू राइट एंड देन यू चेक इट्स इंपैक्ट वेदर इट्स अ पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव और अ नो इफेक्ट अकॉर्डिंगली यू चूज द करेक्ट आंसर सो यस दिस क्वेश्चन दिस इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन टाइप विच डज अपियर इन कैट अलॉट दीज इयर्स राइट सो लेट मी कंटिन्यू टू द नेक्स्ट कैटेगरी द फोर्थ कैटेगरी इज एक्सेप्शन बेस्ड वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कैटेगरी गाइज there are lots of questions in the exception category let, let let's do a counting right these are 72 questions from cat 2017 onwards let's do a head count uh one exception kitna hai main ye dekh raha hu 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 I am not sure eleven or twelve. More than ten, right? Let's take it twelve. So, ये समझ रहे हो? Out of seventy-two questions sample in the last three years, right? One sixth, twelve questions are exception based. This cat has adopted a trend that instead of asking direct questions in a direct manner, they will ask it in the negation format, right? Exception based questions are direct questions, but एक ही difference होता है. क्या difference होता है? तीन correct और एक wrong होता है. Huh? That is the difference, right? Which of the, let's look at the first question. Uh, the author promotes creativity for all the reasons except, which means now see now there are two ways of approaching it. Huh? Very simply, let's understand uh, why am I discussing it because the direct questions have such a high percentage. If exception based is coming, so we need to know it better, right? Uh, one way of doing it is you directly look at because your answer is which one? Wrong one. Exception means that four out of three options would be correct, one would be wrong. One way of doing it is directly you read the four options and you try to identify which one is wrong. But when you try to identify which one is wrong, वो negligence में या convenience में पढ़ के कोई भी option लग सकता है कि it is wrong because वो तुमको मिला नहीं लेते, है ना? And you mark it. ऐसा करने पे ना इतने सारे questions हैं, the chances of getting uh, uh, inaccurate becoming inaccurate is high. Rather, what you should do is with every question read the question, look for three correct, and the fourth one automatically becomes wrong. Now that is a hundred percent concrete way because if you are made sure. We are right in the passage, right? मतलब चौथा जो बचा उसमें तुम convince नहीं हो रहे या फिर वो automatically वो वो wrong है या not mentioned है तो that is the answer. समझ में आ रहा है हमेशा because one sixth questions is type के हैं देख रहे हो समझ रहे हो तो that is why it's very very important that you uh, follow this strategy है you ना know? you look for three correct and the fourth one itself becomes the exception. Is everybody clear with this one? Please reply in chat. Are we clear with this one? Okay, so let's move to the uh, next type. Uh, the next type is inference based. Okay, so uh, yes, there are inference based questions. Inference. Uh, look at uh, question number eleven. Which of the following can be inferred, right, or implied? These types of questions are inference based questions. Uh, you get questions on inference. You get questions on conclusion also. Uh, let me take these two types together because they are they are very close right 
Inference means it's a logical derivation based on what is given in the passage. That is something which you can imply from the passage based on the given information. An inference might not necessarily be the end or the conclusion of the argument. Conclusion means finally what is the outcome? Finally what is the result? Right? At, at the end of the discussion. That is conclusion. Inference is any, you can derive it from any part of the passage. Right? It has a structure of conclusion but it's not the overall output of a discussion. Is the difference clear? But in both you have a structure for conclusion. Everybody getting the point? Inference and conclusion. Conclusion is therefore what is the output? Final result. Uh, inference is something which you derive on the basis of the facts which are given in the passage. So you get questions on inference also and conclusion also. Uh, when you will do the run through, you can actually use the filters that I have created in this Excel file and you can check out what is percentage mein aata hai. Hai? Uh, The last category which we have here is purpose based. Now purpose based is very interesting because let me not uh, confuse you here with uh, purpose based as a category. First thing first, let's be very clear. Purpose based is very similar, very similar to uh, conclusion based. All right. Uh, sorry, sorry. Purpose based is very similar to central idea based. Okay. Now, in purpose based uh, questions, you need to be cautious. Just the difference is the focus is more on why than on what. I mean, central idea or main theme or summary is what is given. Purpose based matlab, in order to, to demonstrate what purpose tha, uske piche objective based. So, us may be main point to khojna hota hai, hai na? but main point ke main reason khojna hota hai. Purpose or reason or objective, these words should flash in your mind whenever you are looking at questions on purpose. Now, you should note down what are the phrases, right, which get used more most commonly when there is a question is a purpose based question. Okay? Everybody look at question number two. And you can write down the phrases which point to purpose based. See, the first phrase, point out. Author, kya point out karne ke liye use kya hai? Kisi bhi ko. That is a purpose based question, right? Question number five, dekho. To show. Ye bhi purpose pooch raha hai iska matlab. Question number seven, to directly purpose pooch raha hai. Right? Uh, le let's look at question number ten. To demonstrate. Matlab again, object purpose ya reason. Why pooch raha hai? Main reason, why pooch raha hai? Generally, purpose-based questions ka answer aapko kisi bhi discussion ke start ya end mein mil jayega. Ya to author introduce karta hai purpose ya to kisi bhi argument ya discussion ke end mein purpose batata hai. But yaha pe bhi main purpose, main point hi pakarna hai. Lekin focus what, what se jada why par hai. That is the logic. Uh, question number 12, if you see, used as a device to. Device to, matlab as a tool. Is cheez ke ufo use kiya gaya hai. Uh, these are purpose-based uh, uh, phrases uh, which uh, uh, you should be clear and the moment you get these, you should, you, you, you should strike in my main point khojna hai, why, reason khojna hai uska. So, these are the different categories which uh, all cat questions can be classified into. That is the interesting thing. It's not that every question is different. It is your ability to immediately categorize the question into a type and then think beyond further to eliminate. That is what matters the most. So, now that you have gone through this small piece of content on understanding uh, question type strategy for RC. Let's go to the next part where I'll take another close to 15-20 minutes and run you through how you are supposed to spend your 15-20 minutes with an RC solving, analysis and learning. So pay attention to this section. Revise it one more round after you have attempted. Make sure that you are understanding the question categories and the attempt psychology properly for all the mock tests that are coming your way. I believe you have gone through this RC. Uh, it's a CAD previous year RC. Some of you might have solved it before, but try to go through the thought process very clearly. Creativity is one of our most precious resources. It's inexhaustible. So as soon as you start, you get it that it's about creativity. Now, anyone who has spent time with children knows that everyone is born creative. We have the ability to combine, recombine data, perceptions, materials, ideas, device ways of thinking, doing. So what fosters creativity? More than anything, presence of other creative people. So what are we talking about? We are talking about creativity. What about it? It's dependent on uh, other uh, people being around, right? Big myth is that it's an individual thing. It's a social process, right? So what is the central idea of the first paragraph? We are talking about creativity. And the fact that it is more social than individual as it is perceived. 
Next para. Cities are the true fonts of creativity with their diverse populations, social networks, public spaces. People meet, they discuss, they uh, create ideas. Cities also provide infrastructure for finance, organization, and trade, and they allow the ideas to be actualized, turn into reality. So what is this now? It's continuing the thought that creativity is a social process. Cities, people, spaces, and infrastructure, they encourage ideas and enable them to get realized. Okay, next para. So what restricts creativity? It's ironic. The very institutions which we create to perpetuate creativity, the bureaucracies, schools, they actually uh, bring creativity down. So what is the third paragraph talking about? The enemy of creativity is institutions and standard practices. Okay, next para. An expert in a study tested children and what did he identify? Identified that by the time we become adults, our creativity goes out. Right? So this paragraph is giving an observation that with age creativity goes down. So we become more, uh, you know, uh, we accept things as they are. We accept standard practices and our mind becomes less creative with age. Next para. So John Jacobs, an urbanist, said, how are some places more creative than others? And what did she say? Uh, all cities have creative people. By default, we are creative. But there are some leaders, people and institutions that block out creativity. Squelchers is what she calls them, right? So this is talking about creatives, uh, cities being creative, but there are people who try to block creativity. Next one, creativity or lack of it, it generally works the very similar way in which socioeconomic divide works. Uh, according to the author, uh, most creative cities are those where you use your mind, right? Uh, in different kind of professions where you, you, have, you, you, you use your uh, brain, right? And then there is another two third of the people who work in jobs where they don't have to use creativity at all. So that's the author's view, right? So author believes that the jobs which are done by mind, they are more creative than the other jobs. Next para. Creativity is not in danger. It is all around us, science, technology, arts, culture, and in our cities, right? But we have to support and reward creativity in everyone if you want creativity to flourish, right? So the last paragraph is talking that creativity in general is omnipresent and flourishing, but you need to support and reward it, right? Okay, so let's go to the questions now. In the author's view, cities pro promote human creativity for all the reasons except. What type of question is this? Exception based. What does it mean? Three will be true, one will not be true or not mentioned, right? So contain spaces to meet and share, yes. Uh, exposes people to new ideas, right? Provides uh, infrastructure, financial institution, yes. Provides access to cultural activities that promote new and way. Uh, creative ways of thinking. Now this, the D1 option, this is not mentioned. So an exception, according to the author, according to the paragraph, right, this is not mentioned, right? So this is an exception. The others are mentioned. Simple. Got it? Okay. Look at the second question. The author uses ironic in the third paragraph to point out that. In the third paragraph, the author says that it is ironic that the same institutes that we create to Propagate creativity, actually staunch it. Remember, that is what we talked about. Look at A. People need social contract rather than isolation to nurture creativity. It's not about individuals, right? In the third paragraph, if you see, right, first, second, and the third paragraph, institutions which are created to promote creativity, they actually nullify it. So it's not about individual, it's about institutions. Look at B. Institutions stifle. Right, looks good. Look at let's look at the other options also. C. The larger the population, the more likely to be stifled. Not mentioned. Bureaucracies are outcome of successful cities. Not very relevant. Right. Point is the ironic part here is that the institutions which are supposed to create, they actually stifle. Irony is what comes out from this, and that is what is mentioned in the third part. Look at the next one. Central idea. Okay. So you have to find the major theme. That's what central idea is about. Look at the options. Creativity is declining. No, the last one, last para says it is flourishing. Look at option C. Creativity is widening with socioeconomic trends. It's just a one, it's a part, not the whole. It's just uh, the, you know, uh, pre-last paragraph. That's it. D. More people should engage in jobs that engage creative. Again, uh, it is hinted only in the second last paragraph. Look at A. Social interaction is necessary to nurture creativity. Look at the first para, look at the last para, you will get that this is the main theme of the whole passage. So in central idea based questions, what you're looking at is essentially relating to the overall flow or the main core of the passage. Four, 
author's conclusion about the most creative cities in the United States are based on the assumptions, right? This comes from that second last para, mind versus hand. Got it? People who work with their hands are not doing creative work. That is what the assumption is, right? Otherwise, how can you conclude that most creative cities are those where some kinds of job prospers, right? Okay. B, more than half the population works in non-creative uh, jobs. This is a factual statement, right? It's not an assumption. Artists, musicians should be valued in a city. It's not about value, should be valued. It's about being creative or not creative. Most cities ignore or uh, base the creativity of low uh, uh, workers. Now, this is hinted, not exactly mentioned, but then still, that is not the assumption. What is the author assuming when he says that creative cities are those where uh, one type of job, people are more engaged in one type of job rather than the other, right? It's about, author believes that only jobs done with the mind are creative. Assumption is the key. If you are winning confused here, go back and understand what is the author basing his conclusion on, right? That is what assumption is. Got it? So, understand, remember, even if you got confused in some options, you need to try, you need to be very clear on the question type and then you need to eliminate options. And if you make a mistake, go back and try to understand what the question type was. Did I catch it in the best possible way or not? You need to learn when to be sure and when you are not. That is what, which will give you skill in your RC. One more thing, students, uh, this level of clarity in terms of attempting, eliminating right, uh, questions, uh, options, getting to the right answer, even if you get it wrong in the test time, right, during analysis, that requires a lot of commitment and belief that I will be able to understand it either in the time given or after the test. If you become very quality conscious, right, number of RCs you solve is not important. The perfection with which you close every RC is important. What do I mean? Let's say you're doing a previous year CAT paper or you're doing a mock test. You take a test, some right, some wrong, right? Once you're done with that, let's say you got four questions wrong out of 16. When you're sitting back at home with those questions in analysis time, make sure that you are ensuring that you understood all those qu four questions where you got wrong. That is where you need to put in the ha hard work. Don't focus your uh, efforts on the solution. Don't read the solution. You got the answer, right? You know why yours was wrong, right? And now you have to understand why the right one is right. Answer is there in the passage. Answer is there in understanding the question, right? And you need to choose the best option. Put effort into understanding that. If you put that quality effort in making sure that you have understood each and every question during your analysis, with few marks, you will become very accurate and this becomes a very high scoring section there. All the best.